Nearing the end of our 12 lead EKG series, we're going to be taking a good look at ischemia and infarction over the next couple lessons. In this lesson specifically here, we're talking about seeing SD depression and T-wave inversion on our EKG, and especially in relation to ischemia and the importance of such along with its recognition. All right, I welcome you guys back to another video lesson from ICU Advantage. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Eddie Watson, and my goal with this channel here is to try to give you guys the confidence to succeed in the ICU by taking these complex critical care subjects and making them easy to understand. I truly hope that I'm able to do just that. If I am, I do invite you to subscribe to the channel below. Uh, make sure you hit that bell icon, though. That way you never miss out when I release a new lesson. Now also, if you do enjoy these lessons and you'd be interested in getting CE credits for following along with them, um, then head on over to icuadvantage.com forward slash academy and join the ICU Advantage Academy where you can watch all these videos. You'll have access to all the notes, including the new notes that I'm currently working on updating, as well as audio only versions of these lessons. And most importantly, you'll be able to actually earn CE credits for participating in this education. So I've got some great deals going on over there, so make sure and check that out. Now, if you would like to support the channel but really don't have a need for the CEs, or if you just want access to things like the notes, then you might also want to take a look at either the YouTube or Patreon memberships. Again, links to both of those. All that stuff is going to be down in the description below. So being able to recognize and evaluate changes on the 12 lead EKG is really paramount in being able to pick up on various pathologies that may be going on with your patient, especially when we're considering possible ischemia. In this lesson here, we're going to be specifically looking at ST depression and T wave inversion, and most notably in the context of NSTEMI. All right, so let's start off with the basics here. When talking about ST depression and T wave inversion, that these can both be caused by a multitude of different things. Obviously, the most concerning is ischemia, but it is important to be able to recognize these for other reasons as well. We can see both ST depression and T wave inversion in the setting of being secondary to a depolarization abnormality. So, here, think our bundle branch box, both our left and our right bundle branch, uh, ventricular hypertrophy, both left and right. Uh, or in Wolf Parkinson White. In these cases, these findings are generally not concerning. That said, if we have ST depression and or T wave inversion in the setting of normal depolarization, we consider these to be primary. Thus, if we have primary ST depression and T wave inversion, and the patient is exhibiting signs and symptoms of ischemia, then we need to assume that these are manifestations as a result of the ischemia. That said, we can have both primary and secondary ST depression and T wave inversion that can really complicate the picture. Typically here, we're going to see deeper ST depression and T wave inversions, especially if we compare it to previous EKGs where only the secondary is present. And with these, we're usually going to be able to see these as disproportionate when we compare them to the size of the QRS complex. All right, so now let's take a deeper look at ST depression. So when it comes to measuring ST depression, remember that we want to measure the ST segment in relation to the PR segment. We want to measure from the J point and anything more than 0.5 millimeters, so a half a small box, and at least two anatomically contiguous leads that we would consider this ST depression. Now, some of our causes of ST depression, we can have non-ischemic causes such as therapeutic digitalis usage, tachycardia, metabolic or electrolyte abnormalities, especially hypokalemia, as well as some people just have normal ST depression present, although this is usually going to be less than one millimeter. Now we do also have those secondary conditions that we just talked about, such as the bundle branch blocks, ventricular hypertrophy, Wolf Parkinson's white, as well as post cardioversion. We can also see this as well. But the most concerning is if we have ST depression that is the result of ischemia. Again, if a patient presents with signs and symptoms of ischemia, even in the presence of the above non-ischemic causes, we need to assume ischemia and rule that out. So we can see ST depression in the context of reciprocal changes from ST elevation in other leads. So here, 
the areas of the heart that are opposite of the ST elevation are actually going to appear as ST depression. This is just a real quick intro into this subject, and we're actually going to be discussing this much more in the next lesson. Now, in addition to reciprocal changes, uh, if the patient is actually having a posterior transmural infarction or a posterior MI, we wouldn't actually see the ST elevation since our leads that we normally place don't actually have a view of the posterior. With this, we're only going to see those reciprocal ST depressions in our anterior leads. So this is going to be the opposite side of the heart from posterior. So V1 through V4, um, and typically it's going to be greatest in V2 or V3. Now having this present and persistent on serial EKGs or continuous monitoring, that this is going to be indicative of a posterior STEMI, and this would warrant a posterior view EKG. And then finally, let's talk about ST depression in the context of ischemia. So this ischemia is actually something that we call subendocardial ischemia. So this basically means that the ischemia does not go the full length of the cardiac muscle, um, something that we call transmural ischemia. The ischemia is usually just going to be present towards the endocardium, hence the name subendocardial ischemia. Now here with ischemia, we're looking for ST depression in, again, two or more contiguous leads, uh, like I said, greater than 0.5 millimeters or half a box. And we can have two primary causes of ST depression that are resulting from ischemia. Acute coronary syndrome and secondary ischemia. And to note here with these two is we actually can't differentiate between these two causes from the EKG alone. We're going to need to evaluate the patient and their presentation to really try and differentiate between them. All right, so when it comes to acute coronary syndrome or ACS, the ST depression that we see in the context of ACS is going to be the result of either a non-occlusive thrombus in the coronary arteries or an occlusive thrombus if the patient happens to have collateral circulation present. So here what we have is our coronary arteries that have our blood flow going through there. Uh, this patient has a plaque that has developed and that plaque actually ruptures and leads to the formation of a thrombus. Now with the formation of this thrombus, that it's not going to typically completely block the flow of blood unless, like we just talked about, they have that collateral circulation. Um, but this is still going to allow some blood and oxygen to reach myocardial tissue. And this is the pathology that we see in unstable angina and NSTEMI. In these cases, T-wave inversion, which I'll actually be talking about next here, may or may not be present. And with this, typically we're either going to see flat or downsloping ST segments. And the deeper and more pronounced that the ST depression is, as well as the more leads that we see it in, that this is generally correlated with the degree of ischemia that's taking place. Now, if these patients also have elevated troponins, then this is going to be a strong indicator of adverse outcomes, and thus these patients would benefit from early invasive management, aka cath lab. That said, these patients actually do not meet the criteria for thrombolysis, uh, as there really was no real mortality benefit seen when they studied this. Now, along with all of this, it's really important to note that with ST depression, that this does not actually localize like ST elevation does. Therefore, uh, ST depression in particular leads really doesn't give us an indication of where the ischemia is taking place, except in that context of reciprocal changes in STEMI, and especially if that patient is having a posterior STEMI. So really, for example here, if you've got an EKG and you see ST depression in leads V3 and V4, this doesn't necessarily mean that the ischemia is taking place in the anterior wall. For secondary ischemia, this is basically where we have ischemia that's not the result of a thrombus. And really, we can see this when there's an imbalance in the oxygen supply and oxygen demand. So on the supply side, uh, if the supply of oxygen is going to be reduced, such as with hypotension, anemia, hypoxemia, or toxins, that this can lead to the imbalance and thus ischemia. Whereas on the demand side, if the oxygen demand is increased, such as with high cardiac output states like sepsis, etc., uh, Addison's disease, hyperthyroidism, uh, or even high catecholamine states like tachycardia and hypertension, we can again see an imbalance leading to ischemia and the ischemic changes. 
And this can also be the result of sympathetic overload, uh, which we can see with subarachnoid hemorrhage, sepsis, respiratory failure, and overdose. All right, so now on to T-wave inversion. Now that we've talked about the ST depression, we also need to talk about T-wave inversion when it comes to ischemia. Now, when we're thinking about the repolarization event, uh, this makes up our T-wave, and this normally happens in the leftward to inferior and anterior direction. So this means that most of the leads we're going to expect to see normal upright T-waves, um, generally, we're not going to worry about inverted T waves if we see them in leads 3, AVR, and V1, as they're really not uncommon to see here due to the direction that these leads look. This doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be inverted, but if we do see it here, we're generally not that concerned. And then when looking at leads 1, 2, V5, and V6, that these should always be positive. And we can see inverted T waves in non ischemic pathologies. Uh, such as hyperventilation, orthostatic changes, electrolyte abnormalities, as well as some normal variant conditions. That said, when we are looking at ischemia, uh, we can have delayed and abnormal repolarization of the ventricle that's taking place. Uh, thus, this leads to electrical activity going in the wrong direction, leading to the flattening or inversion of T waves that we see on the EKG. So here we're looking for T wave inversion that's at least one millimeter deep, so one small box, again present in two or more anatomically contiguous leads, and especially if it's not present on a previous EKG. T wave inversion can also precede changes that we see with the ST segment, such as ST depression or elevation, and therefore in the context of signs and symptoms of ischemia, T wave inversion should absolutely be taken very seriously. All right, and that was our quick review over ST depression and T-wave inversion on our 12-lead EKG, which is going to lead us into the next lesson, and which we're going to be talking about the big one, ST elevation and STEMI. So I hope that you guys found this information useful. If you did, please leave me a like on the video down below. Uh, it really helps YouTube know to show this video to other people out there, as well as leave me a comment down below. I love reading the comments that you guys leave, and I try to respond to as many people as I can. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And a special shout out to the awesome YouTube and Patreon members out there. The support that you're willing to show me and this channel is truly appreciated, so thank you guys so very much. If you'd be interested in showing additional support for this channel, you can find links to both the YouTube and Patreon membership down below. Head on over there and check out some of the perks that you guys get for doing just that. As well as check out some of the links to other nursing gear, as well as some awesome t-shirt designs I have down there as well. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the next lesson that I release. Otherwise, in the meantime, here's a couple awesome lessons I'm going to link to right here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.